Hey everybody, welcome to another segment of Accounting Imbalances How Do I series. In this segment, we get to continue our discussion of how do I reduce test anxiety. Now we started last time by introducing a model of dealing with test anxiety, talking about training, how we get ourselves ready before the test starts, both mentally and emotionally. And now we wanna talk about the other two pieces, endurance, what we do during the test, and closure, what we do after the test. Let's get started. First, we wanna talk about endurance and what we can do during the test, not just to hold on and survive it, but to do well despite the challenges that we're facing as we discussed last time. Specifically, we wanna walk through the process of what we do once the test starts. And the very first thing is to not just jump in and start answering questions. Instead, take a moment to look through the material and take a deep breath. Glance through the questions, take a look at which ones you feel like you can answer really easily, which ones you feel are going to be hard. <sighs> I can do this. And then once you've done that, then you wanna make yourself a plan. What I have found to be the best plan for me to maximize my points is to start by answering the questions I'm confident about. Once I'm done with that, and it can be a few or it can be a lot, then I'm gonna go back through and try everything else. And as I work through it, if I feel confident, great. If I don't feel confident, I'm gonna mark that question with a little asterisk. And once I'm sure I have tried every question in the test, I'm gonna go back to every question with an asterisk and give myself a little more time to think through it, try it again, make sure that I'm really comfortable with what I've answered. As you do that third wave, focus on points. I wanna hit questions that I think I can get the most points from. Now, taking a deep breath and making a plan, those can slow you down, at least it feels that way. But it doesn't have to take a long time. You can do all of this very, very quickly and then move right in to actually working on the test. It's just a matter of having a basic plan already in your head and deciding which, which questions fit in which phase. Once you've got your plan, then it's time to start writing. And it doesn't even matter where you start, just start. There is something really scary about a blank page that you know you have to fill, especially when there's a time limit. So start filling the page. It can be as simple as writing your name at the top and then answering a couple questions you know the answer to. It can also be writing down a basic equation, one that you know you're gonna need from glancing through the test. It really doesn't matter what you start with as long as you start writing and get something on the page so that it no longer feels blank. <sighs> I've started, I'm okay. And the last piece of this endurance is to use a model to help yourself think through the answers to each question. The biggest comment I hear from students on test questions is, oh, I answered the wrong thing. Don't fall into that trap. Find yourself a model that will help you identify the question and answer it correctly, because that will help you feel more confident as you go through the rest of the test. Personally, I recommend a model called Stop and Think where S is for summarize, what kind of problem is this? Where does it fit into what I've studied? T is for think, what is it that the professor is asking me to do? What is it the test writer is asking me to do? O is for organize, what steps do I need to get through to get that answer? And then P is for proceed. Once again, that seems counterintuitive. Why should I take time to go through a formal process? Don't take a lot of time, take 15 seconds. Walk through at least those first two pieces. Summarize what the general category is and think about specifically what the test writer wants you to do. Even if you don't go through the other two, go through those so you make sure you're answering the right question. And as you make sure you hit these questions and you feel good about understanding them, not only are you going to answer them correctly, but you're gonna reduce your anxiety. The last thing is closure. I've finished the test, I'm walking out. How do I get closure? Well, first off, as you walk out of the test, take the win. You did it, you finished the test, yes! You get to feel good about that. I got through what was a really hard test for me. Yes, all that studying paid off, I worked hard, I did my best. That's good enough, celebrate that. Next, do something you enjoy. Give yourself permission to relax at this point. 
you've finished the test, you've celebrated that you've done so well, now let yourself do some of the fun things you've put on hold while you were prepping for the exam. Go out with friends, go take a hike, play a game, watch a movie, binge watch a series online, whatever it is that you do for fun. Take some time to do it. Now, often my students push back with me on this. Jason, I can't relax. I have to finish this test and then I've got to go to this class and I've got to work on a project. I understand there's other time pressures, but give yourself at least some time to do something that you enjoy as a reward to yourself because it will help you for future tests. If you know, if I can get through this, I can do this thing that I enjoy, it will help you in the future. So this is an important step. Make sure you give yourself even a shortened time period to do something that you like. And finally, talk to somebody. Now, a lot of us like to talk to our classmates. How did you do? What did you get on the test? What did you do on this question? No, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is go find a friend, call grandma, talk with your mom, talk with your dad, talk to your boss at work or a colleague, talk to somebody who will remind you how awesome you are. Because often as we walk away from a test, especially if we feel bad, that I am stupid or I couldn't do that or I feel awful kind of settles on us as a depression. And celebrating the win will help a little, doing something you enjoy will help a little, but talking to your cheerleader, that will really pick you back up. And again, what you're trying to do is do some things that push this test to the side and allow you to refocus on other important things in your life. So let yourself celebrate, let yourself relax, and let somebody build you back up because you're worth it. You know, I, I don't talk about my own failures very often in videos like this, but I remember one test in particular where I aced the first half and bombed the second half. And it was a really, really important test. And uh, it was one of those that either makes or breaks you in your profession. I was not sure I was going to get to do what I wanted to do with my life because I had bombed that second half of the test. The good news was they gave me an opportunity to retake it. The bad news was I had to wait a year before I could retake it and it was so stressful. One of the things that got me through was going through this closure process. I passed half the test, that was my win. I did do something I enjoyed. After I finished the second half of the test, before I even heard the results, I had purchased myself a movie series and I went home and I watched that series and I think fried chicken, I don't even remember, but I had bought a favorite food too and I got to relax and enjoy. And I knew, I knew, I hadn't seen the test scores yet, but I knew part of it had gone well and there was a good chance I had not done well in that second part. <sighs> and then I talked to somebody. After I found out that I had done so poorly, not only did I talk to my wife, who was my cheerleader, but I also went back and talked to the professor who had written the test. And all of them told me the same thing. You just, you, we saw your answers to the first day. You can do this. You just didn't study the right stuff. Here's what I want you to do so that you're ready for the next one. And everyone was very supportive. And even though it was hard to wait, I got there. I got there. And I was able to close down the door on this old test and focus on the new one and uh, was able to pass and move on with my career. Now, because I had a year's break between one test and the makeup test, I learned some other very important things. And those are the things not to do when you're taking exams. And I dealt with this a lot as I took the first test and then prepared and took the second version of this test a year later. So what I want to share with you are four anxiety inducers. These are things that make the exam worse that you want to avoid. So first, don't give the exam any extra power. It's already taking time and energy and mental health uh, to, to study and to focus and to deal with the stress. Don't let it have any more power than that. And I really struggled with this. If I don't do well in the second test, I may have to change my whole career path and it's gonna be awful and I don't know what I'm gonna do. And I had to stop myself and realize, even if I don't do well on this test, I can still be a successful accountant in a lot of other areas. I may not get to do my primary goal, uh, but I will still be able to be a successful accountant. This test was not going to break me or make me less of a person. So don't give the test that kind of a power. Doing badly on one exam 
will not stop you from being a success in your life. Don't start thinking that way. Second, don't watch the clock. This happens in the exam. Don't shoot yourself in the foot by focusing on the clock. Now that doesn't mean you don't want to check your time and make sure you're doing okay with your phases. It just means don't be constantly looking at the clock. Give yourself permission to check the clock as you finish each phase. I have finished part one. How am I doing? Yep, that looks okay. I've got what I'm comfortable with done. I'm okay on time. Now I'm going to go through, try it again, check the clock. Ah, I've got five more minutes. Where can I use that five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes the best? Those are the only times we want to check the clock. Other than that, you're just causing yourself stress watching the seconds tick by. Third, don't follow your classmates. I have been in classes, whether as a student or as a teacher, where there are some people who get the test done in 15 or 20 minutes and walk out. And there are some people that stay until the very, very, very end. There are some people that whip through the test and change pages. There are some people that sit on one page forever. Don't watch what anybody else is doing. Because if you try to mirror them, number one, it looks like you're cheating, which is bad. Number two, it stresses you out when you don't match them. So to the best of your abilities, don't even watch anybody else. Don't focus on them. Don't think about them. It's just you, your plan, and your test. Finally, don't dwell on the outcome. When you walk out of the test, you're a successful person. You completed that test. That's all that matters. Okay, may not be the grade you want, but there are lots of options in any class or situation to either retake, redo, make up points, and move forward with your life. And even if you have to change plans, you can still be very, very successful without passing any one particular test. So don't dwell on it. Let it go and move on. And I'll tell you, for myself, it took me about six months after I failed that first test to deal with that last anxiety inducer. I was so afraid of what I was going to lose. It took me about six months. And I finally, after six months, realized, yep, I'm okay. I am feeling really good about how I'm studying. I'm feeling really good about what's going to happen this next time. And they just told me I don't have to take the whole test again, just the part I didn't do well. I'm going to be okay. And sure enough, I was able to move on with my life and my career and be okay. And that's how we reduce test anxiety. Nothing special, nothing earth shattering, just a series of simple steps and a series of confidence boosters that will allow us to become less attached to any one test and more focused on really learning and developing as a person. And hopefully that makes sense to you and you'll be ready to go on any future tests that you have to take. Of course, we'll have more fun topics coming up in our How Do I series. We'll see you then. Thanks.